Days after, the gunmen who police say were behind the attack on the Charlie Hebdo satirical magazine were killed in a police raid. Investigators are still racing to learn whether the main suspects were acting on their own or carrying out someone else's orders. Intelligence officials are beginning to find clues to a key question. How are the gunmen connected to one another and to known terrorist organizations? Let's start with the two brothers seen in this video after their alleged attack on the magazine that left 12 people dead. Sharif Kouachi and Saeed Kouachi are both French citizens of Algerian descent. Sharif, the younger brother, was arrested in 2005 after French authorities uncovered a larger network of would-be French jihadists who were planning to fight U.S. soldiers in Iraq. His older brother was questioned by French police but didn't take any further action against him. Sheriff was detained and eventually convicted of terrorism offenses in 2008, but released soon after. But while in jail, Sheriff had contact with an Al-Qaeda recruiter, Jamal Begal. The Algerian was serving time for his involvement in a plot to bomb the U.S. Embassy in France. Mr. Begal also had contact with Ahmadi Koulibaly, the gunman who, the day after the Charlie Hebdo attack, allegedly killed a police officer and last Friday killed four hostages at a kosher grocery in Paris before being shot in a raid by police. In 2009, all three men were out of prison. Mr. Koulibaly and Sheriff Kouachi began making regular visits to Mr. Begal, who sought their involvement in a secret plan. More on that in a moment. The following year, Said traveled to Yemen, staying there for close to two years. <laughs> Yemen is the base of Al-Qaeda's most dangerous offshoot. Said arrived in the country on a student visa issued by the language school he attended. There, he became friends with a neighbor across the hall who also attended the same mosque. Nigerian Omar Farouk Abdul Matalab, who had become known to the world in December of that year as the underwear bomber. Mr. Abdumatalb was convicted of attempting to blow up a flight from Amsterdam to Detroit by detonating plastic explosives hidden in his underwear. He was supplied with the bomb and trained by Al-Qaeda. Mr. Abdumatalb met extensively with the group's leader, Anwar al-Awlaki. The U.S.-born preacher recruited and groomed men to commit terror acts abroad. Mr. al-Awlaki was killed in a 2011 U.S. drone strike. What remains unclear is what relationship, if any, Said had with Yemen's al-Qaeda affiliate during his time in Yemen. He returned to France in 2010. That same year, his brother Sheriff gets in trouble with the police for his alleged role in a plan led by Mr. Begal and including Mr. Koulibaly to help an Algerian militant convicted of planting a bomb in the Paris subway in 1995 escape from prison. Police arrested these three men and others when they feared their plan was about to be put in motion. Mr. Begal is still serving a 10-year sentence. He denies through his lawyer any involvement in the Paris attack. Mr. Koulibaly was convicted and released from prison last year. Prosecutors didn't press charges against Mr. Kouachi. The year after this arrest, he traveled to Yemen, where it's believed he made more terrorist contacts. So who else was involved in the Paris attack? We don't know for sure, but Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula is now claiming responsibility, releasing a video in which a senior leader says his organization financed and planned the operation. In a video released on Islamic social networks, Mr. Kobali pledges his allegiance to the leader of the Islamic State. Mr. Kobali's girlfriend is also an alleged accomplice. Turkish officials say she arrived in Istanbul on January 2nd and last week crossed into Syria. It's not known if she joined up with Islamic State or any other group there. Investigators say they're still trying to learn how and whether Al-Qaeda or Islamic State were involved in some way, or if the plotting and planning for the Paris attack was done entirely by the men who are now themselves dead. That's the short answer.